I wish he was the one getting chucked out. I just wish everyone would stop talking about it. It wasn't lying, Dad. That wasn't my question. So someone planted a whole bag, did they? Him. He's hated me from the start. I wonder how she'd feel if she knew. What do you want? What do you mean you're leaving? It's my dad. He's sending me to his old school in Northern Ireland. Boys, give it here. Come on, the hoodie. It's my brother's. It's mine. It's too good for a little runt like you. He's done it on purpose. He'll be all over me for a study date, and then I'll do all the work, and he'll just sign his name at the bottom. That is, if he can write his own name. Hey, study buddy. Is it cool if I come and get that book off you later? I thought maybe you could read it to me, because I struggle with the long words. <laughs> do you even know where I live? Denmark Muse, right? Right. See ya. He's so full of himself, and he smells like chlorine. Oh, I'd kill for a baby. I've got to be in my life. My parents are going to go mad when they find out. I doubt my mum and dad will even show up tonight. They think parents' evening is a waste of time. Sorry, I didn't think. It's OK. Tony goes to parents' evenings for me. At least it get her out of my face for one night. I'm still grounded. I'm grounded for lying about the party, but she's been lying to me about Jay this whole time. Jay? Don't get her started. So basically, Jay owns our calf. He won it in a poker game. Last I knew, the rent was going to some bar, and now it's going to Jay. Um, I'll see you later. Did you hear that, Cal? Tony knows where Jay is. Hey, Cal, we are. How do I look? Like a mop with eyes. Oi, Stephen. What number Denmark Muse do you live at? Nine. Why? Just got a call on your sister later. Oh, yeah? No, nothing like that. We're paired in some project. And she hates my guts for some reason, so... Hey, I'm doing the last shift for Tony while she's at Putin's evening. Come keep me company? Oh, I can't tonight. The human fish is coming over. <laughs> See you tomorrow? Yeah. What are you doing tonight? Nothing. Great. You've got a laptop, right? Yeah, it's a Linux kernel 2.6 and it runs twin GPUs. And it's got a program that makes it sound like a lightsaber when you swing it around. Can I borrow it? It's just I've got this application to do tonight, but I can't really do it at home. Yeah. I'll just go and get it. Alex? Have you heard from Tommy? Yeah, he called. And did he sound OK? Dad spoke to him. Look, if you're missing the Fitzpatrick magic, then uh, my door's always open. Or should I say Tommy's door? You've moved into his room? Losing my brother has some advantages. Maybe your dad will lay off now, then. Look, it must be difficult for you, not having a dad for reference, but believe me, Things in the Fitzpatrick household, they've never been better. It's a parents' evening, Daniel, and I want you to behave like a parent! 
doing the best I can. Well, then you'll stay away from Tony tonight. Otherwise, you can come home on your own. <sighs> OK, so it shouldn't get too busy, but I want everyone out by... 6.30. And the keys to the back door are... On the hook by the till. You can trust us, Tony. Olive knows the score and Cameron will be here to help if anyone's too much fun. OK, and Olive has my mobile number and the card to the local PC is on the till. If anything happens, call me, OK? Time this cafe got a life. What? Here she is. We're best friends. Wouldn't it be better off working in the living room? Oh, for heaven's sake, Daniel, they're just studying. Right now. Well, is there something that you like about her? Yes. I like the way that her body So, do you want to pick this passage, then? I thought that I'd do that and just let you know tomorrow. Well, actually, add some ideas. Come on, baby. We get along. Please don't you spoil it. Don't steal us wrong. No! Biffy fan? What? Oh. Just thinking about what my teachers are going to say to Tony tonight. Loxley Olive. If she tries really hard this year, she could be average. Hey, you made the band. That's not average. Look, I'm not doing it. Oh, I didn't realise you like being average. Great. Um, I'm sorry we're closing. Oh, come on all. Another half hour won't hurt. Tony's already going to be mad at me about my grades. I don't want to make it any worse. We'll close at seven, I promise. Here, look, this one. The one where she's dying and he's standing at the window. Uh, isn't that a little bit obvious? Yeah, if we look at it from her point of view, but if we flip it and think about how he sees it, then... What, that he's still in love with her? Yeah, but the last thing he's going to do is tell her. Look, fighting's just the way they love. Yeah, well, I'm glad someone's getting their kicks. Doesn't make it any easier for the rest of us. Anyway, look, this way we don't have to work together. I'll take him, you take her, and we can compare notes at the end. Yeah? Fine. All right. You never told me what it was that made you strong and what it was that made you when I applied for year 10 work experience at Greg's, I took the company policy and I plotted it against my own skills so you could totally see how they matched up. And I also recorded a short presentation on how I was suited to distributing baked goods. And did you get the placement? They didn't get back to me, actually, but I guess competition was pretty fierce. <laughs> You're funny. Um, so how come you can't do this at home? It's not really something my parents would approve of. <laughs> well, your secret's safe with me. <laughs> What's going on? Lotsley's calf is still open. A couple of us are going down. If... Look, I heard your parents fighting earlier. My folks were always at it too. I, I just thought you'd want to come down and get out of the house. I'm busy. Hey, um, Dad. The teachers tonight, they might say some stuff about some things I did last term. Sorry, sir. I want you here when I get back. She said I was funny. Funny looking more like. And she was really impressed with my graph, you could tell. Can you focus, please? Did you look at the accounts book? Yeah. 
I found a bunch of these. She's been sending the rent to the dive bar till about six months ago. It's not even that far away from here. We could go tonight. Mm, no way. I'm not going to that place. My parents made me sign a pledge never to go there. A pledge? Yeah, I've signed a few for no drinking, no drugs, no human pyramids. Human pyramids. I broke my ankle in your eight. Your parents are weird. Maybe. Still, I'm not going to the dive bar. It's scary. You'd go if Catherine asked you to go. Of course I wouldn't. OK, maybe I would, if she really wanted to go or on a date or something. Look, I'll, I'll go with you, but just not tonight, OK? Promise me you won't go on your own. OK. I promise. Go get a tiger. I'm just another soul for sale. Frankie Stern's parents are in our show again. Can we get Mrs. White to give him a call in the morning? Thanks. <sighs> Hi. Sorry. There seems to be a minority of parents who don't seem to understand the importance of nights like these. Take a seat. <sighs> ha, Alex. <laughs> He's definitely made his mark at this school. There's very few teachers or students who weren't aware of his um, activities. Resourceful child, Alex. There was a few issues at the start of term, online bullying, that sort of thing, but it's all cleared up now. And then there's the incident with Tommy. But there's no reason to think Alex is heading the same way. With the right encouragement, he can really turn things around. <laughs> you sound like my wife. <laughs> She's a prat too. Alex will wind you around his finger and set you spinning like a top. The sooner you realise that, the better. Don't say it. What? We have made more money in the last half hour than your sister's made all day. I don't need to worry about the cafe killer coming back. I think Tony's going to kill me herself. Uh, Olive. I found these in my brother's room. They were under his pillow. You must have left them there when you stayed over. Get lost, Alex. Can I have one of those, please? If you give me a hand with something first. <laughs> so, you're Mr Andrews? You're Olive's mum. Um, how do... I... Sister. I'm my sister. Oh, of course. God. <laughs> Tony, you look beautiful. I should have made the connection, of course. Olive's clearly very popular with the boys. Is she? Yeah. Just like her sister. <laughs> <laughs> used to drive us mad back in the day. I still can't believe that we... Yeah. It was a long time ago. Yeah, eight years and six months. Approximately. So, you're a teacher? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. The kids are brilliant. Yeah. Olive too? Olive. Oh, of course, Olive, yeah. Yeah, let's talk about Olive, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Look, I've got like one appointment left. Maybe I can drive you home and we can discuss Olive's progress? I'd like that. Yeah? <laughs> High five. What's your sister doing? Don't know. Probably at home thinking about shoes. Does Tony know you're still open? I'll we'll pause well before morning Tony gets back. Marla McKinnon. Can you hear this? This is the sound of people having a life. Who? No, he didn't turn up. So get your skinny butt over here and bring your iPod. Alex? 
time we got this party started. Are you Fitzpatrick? Or what? Out in the cold again, Frankie. You should know. And so Cameron's been cast as the non-threatening comedy geek. Even plucky little Olive, although she's lost the guy, has joined the school band. But where do you fit into this little story? Where do you? I'm the rank outsider. You're just a tag along. Think about it, Frankie. What do you actually bring to a party? How about some serious dirt on the news attacks? <laughs> Laugh all you want, but when I show the police where the attacker is, I'll most likely be on the news. Where will you be? I'm going to talk to Jay Kelso at the dive bar. Then we'll see what Frankie brings to the party. Stephen's had a shaky start. Shaky how? You received the letter about the incident involving him and Tommy Fitzpatrick? That kid was a pusher. Stephen was on to him way before you were. Your son's unpredictable. He's a nightmare to teach. He turns up to half his lessons and some of the kids are scared of him. Well, Stephen? He's a pussy cat. We have a record of violence at this school. What's worse, it's targeted. Targeted? No, the Loxley family. They're not really in our circle. Well, for some reason, every time your son's around a certain Olive Loxley, he loses control of his fists. Just playing nice. Look, you've got to keep her sweet, otherwise she'll start asking questions. You're doing this for us, Steve, eh? Drink. You're lucky to have Stephen. He's the best student you'll have the whole of your career. I know. Look, he's got a piece of coursework due in on Monday. I'm not sure if he's even looked at it. But if he doesn't submit it, I'll have no choice but to fail him. And he can wave goodbye to his lots of place. Well sorted. Oh, I thought you said he wasn't going to be here. Who? Ah, Elliot. Yeah, you just turned up. Not a big deal, was it? I suppose not. You OK? Yeah, I should have really stressy call my parents. Hey, there's one more question left here. Okay. Just close it down, will you? Uh, it's not finished. My parents will never let me do it anyway, so what's the point? You really can let your mum push you around. Why not? It seems to work for you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. There'll be something else, right? Seen Frankie leave. Oh, have you lost your little girlfriend? I'm gonna go look through it. Will you be okay? Uh, I think she'll be fine. Look, forget about your mum and forget about Radio One. You have made Loxie's Cafe cool. That is nothing short of genius. What's this? Mango and coconut? <coughs> what, and vodka? <coughs> what the hell's going on?
looking for Jay Kelso? Is he here? together? No, of course not. I trusted you. Well, you were hanging out with Mr Andrews. Catherine's filled the till. Don't start on me, Olive. You're in no position to give me any cheek tonight. And where's Cameron? I told him to keep an eye on you. There's been these attacks. Near where I live. Attacks. Properly violent. Two people left for dead. And we know Jay's involved. Who's we? Me and my mate. He'll be here in a minute. And he's massive. I can't get through to Cameron or Frankie. I don't know. I don't know where Frankie is. I know where Frankie is. She's at the dive bar across town. <laughs> Little Frankie thinks she's on the trail of the cafe you kill her. Wait, she's gone to the dive bar on her own? No, that's too dangerous. Hi. Hello, Massive. Everyone's been looking for you. You told them I was here. You did tell them, Cam. Oh, bad move, Cam. Hey, wait! Do you really think this is a good idea? What do you care, anyway? Bad things happen around here. Go straight home, OK? Me and Stephen will go and find Cameron and Frankie. Oh, you really do think you're some sort of hero, don't you? Think what you like. So, uh, how's business doing? Terrible. A session, eh? Yeah. Come on, Cam. Sorry, where do you think you're going? Nowhere. You came here to talk about Jay. So, let's talk about Jay. What makes you think he's responsible for these attacks? Because he's vanished. People vanish all the time. They must be down here. We're in here! Good evening. Are you guys all right? Where'd you get off scaring little kids? Just having a bit of fun. Come on, guys, let's go. Stephen. Stephen. McKinnon. How do you know who I am? Cameron called. They found Frankie. Thank God. Thank you. For what? For telling us where she went. Maybe it's not all true what they say about you. And what do they say? <laughs> that you're a scary little psycho. Oh, that. It feels good, doesn't it? Helping people out. Marla said you went to the dive bar. Your mother's frantic. Yeah, well, I'm fine. What happened? <laughs> Don't make out like you care. You think you're tough. I can tell you there's some pretty unsavory characters out there. Yeah, you should know.
How much does he know? 